Hi, and welcome to our next installment of Crop Tour. This episode has us in the thick of the growing season, and we're venturing out to see what farmers are doing to keep their crops healthy. We're gonna be talking weeds and diseases, and we're gonna talk about how to control them safely and effectively. We'll also check in on some other mid-season ideas to improve your yields and protect your crops throughout the growing season. It's weeds, bugs, fungi, and a lot more here on the Crop Tour. Since people started farming, they've been at war with weeds, and for a good reason. Weeds take water, nutrients, and they shade your crop. And what's worse, a problem not dealt with quickly can easily get a lot worse. Studies have shown untreated weeds can take up to 45 pounds of nitrogen per acre. Weeds that grow a foot tall in soybeans can cut yield by 10%. Weeds allowed to get just four inches tall could cost you three bushels per day if left untreated. You just gotta keep an eye on it. You, you wanna get them before they get too bad. And we have our agronomist and he's out there scouting our fields all the time and watching the bugs. He's watching weeds. And when he says start spraying your bugs, you, you know, we, we go and just keep an eye on them and get the right coverage on them and using the right chemicals and the right products. And, usually cleans them up and takes care of them. So good agronomy, good agronomy services is, a real, is a, definitely a plus and a, it helps you out and it's a money saver too. If you want a good crop, you have every reason to be at war with weeds. Fighting weeds takes a lot of weapons and the knowledge of how to use them. Like a lot of things, a single attack strategy won't get the job done. To combat weeds, create a weed management plan that includes both pre-emergence and post-emergence methods. Here's some tips and best practices for controlling weeds all year long. There are numerous nozzle tips out there for herbicides and almost any work for pre-emergence. However, you should be more cautious with post-emergence herbicides. Consider the type of herbicide and the droplet size of the nozzle. For instance, nozzles with large droplets are great for translocated herbicides, but should be avoided for contact herbicides. An example, glyphosate or Roundup or glufosinate or Liberty. Plan to utilize tillage in the off season. Chisels, discs, cultivators, rippers to tear up weed roots when they're small. Start thinking now about what tools you have and if you need to get something new. Always make sure the herbicide you are using can control the weeds at the current height. If they're past that height, the weeds may not die and could become resistant to the herbicide, passing that trait along to their progeny. You should also keep the growth stage of the crop in mind. If you use a herbicide outside of the labeled window, you can cause serious injury to your crop and cause yield loss. If you are tank mixing products, follow the most restrictive label in regards to crop growth stage restrictions. Use a full herbicide rate so your field will have lasting weed control. Reduced rates can accelerate weed resistance. There are no shortages of studies out there to show you that thoughtful weed management can pay off for your farm. Start thinking now for what you'll need to do for next year. Your fields will thank you, and your increase in yield is the proof. If weeds are frustrating, insects are downright infuriating. Words simply can't describe the mix of panic and fury when your crops are under attack. You have to be ready when it does happen, and you have to react quickly when it's time to battle the bugs. While there are some typical insects that one will see throughout the country, Many insects can be regional problems. Yield loss due to insects can therefore vary quite a bit between states and areas, as well as what type of insect it is. Many times, pests can be controlled by crop rotation and selecting insect resistant varieties. Tillage of crop residue in the fall and getting rid of volunteer plants prior to planting also helps control insect populations. Other times, you just have to get out there quickly and take them out with a sprayer and pesticide. One way to prepare for pest damage and your reaction is setting a threshold for when you're going to act. Developing an economic threshold can help make sure you are keeping an eye on your crop and not increasing input costs when the benefit of yield increase would not be there. One threshold that can be used is 30% foliage loss two weeks prior to blooming or 15% foliage loss two weeks prior to flowering until pods have been filled. There are many online resources available to help determine thresholds for insects. The best situation you can have for dealing with pests is being thoughtful and ready to act. 
With a plan in place, these insects don't stand a chance. It has been estimated that 25% of the world's crops are affected by mycotoxins each year. These toxic substances are caused by fungus and they cost 1 billion metric tons of food each year. Vomitoxin is the most common problem. It's caused by head scab in wheat. Despite these sobering facts, there is still a lingering reluctance to use fungicides. Farmers seem less eager to prevent fungus than they do to combat weeds or pests. At least part of what drives this decision is some farmers not getting the results they seek. Yet the reason some fungicides fail is not because of fungus at all. The real culprit is possibly an inaccurate disease diagnosis, such as bacterial infection. For others, it may be a question of rates or timing. Before you apply a fungicide, you should ensure the problem is not caused by insects, chemical injury, bacterial diseases, nematodes, etc. Fungicides do not protect against any of these issues, only fungal infection. Even if it is a fungal infection, you as a grower have to properly diagnose the issue, as many fungicides are not cure-all strategies. We had the airplane flying, putting on fungicide, and an extra 15 pounds of nitrogen, because recommended by the agronomist, and then it started to rain. Then when the flag leaf come out, we hit it with another shot of fungicide, and we did our part, and the good Lord did the rest. In the search for boosting yields, a fungicide program should really be a part of the discussion. Used at the right times and for the right conditions, you could protect your crop and your bottom line. We're very fortunate to have our own agronomist on staff, and he offers some great advice on using nitrogen later in the season to boost your yields. Here's Darren Goebel with the agronomist perspective. When we think about nitrogen management, and whenever I talk with growers that I advise, um, I like to talk about the four R's of nutrient management. The right source, the right rate, the right place, and the right time. When I advise growers um, from a nitrogen standpoint, what I like to do is, is make sure that we have adequate nitrogen out in the field to get us through that V6 to V8 time frame. And when I think about adequate nitrogen, what I typically ask guys to do is to do some type of pre-plant application, uh, getting that into that 50 to 75 pounds uh, and or a pre-plant plus starter application. So the goal is to get that 50 to 75 pounds out there very, very early in the season so we have enough to get us into that side dress window without limiting um, yield potential for the crop. Uh, once we get into that side dress window, what I typically advise guys to do is really wait as late as they can um, and yet get that, get that side dress on by V10. And the reason for getting it on by V10 is that typically as we get much past V10, we're entering into a drier part of the season where it becomes much more difficult to get the nitrogen into the soil and up into the plant. If you have one of those fields that you've, uh, you've lost an excessive amount of, of nitrogen, maybe you run into a situation where you're not able to get it on timely, there is still some benefit for putting on later season nitrogen. But typically I'd like to look at that as a rescue only treatment um, and not a general practice. Uh, one of the problems with that very late season nitrogen is as you get later and later, um, you start to run into problems with weather where it's, where it's a lot drier, a lot, a lot hot, hotter, um, and that corn plant just has difficulty getting that, getting that nitrogen into the plant in time to actually be able to be used. Well, we're headed down the road on our crop tour and chasing out the weeds, bugs, and fungi along the way. Make sure to follow our progress and take part in the conversation at agcocropcare.com. Until next time, we wish you, your farm, and your crops every bit of success.